Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like Simons, back again. Got my boy Justin, Luke. How goes it, gentlemen? Great. Very cold. Chilly. It is a chilly day. Chilly, rainy today is we're recording this. And um, that happens to be the topic of today's podcast is wintertime fishing, in particular, live bait versus artificial lures. I'm going to start off with a funny little story. So last weekend, I was at the soccer fields, spending a lot of time at the soccer fields with the kids. And we were watching Savannah's game. And I met this guy who was uh, related to uh, one of the other soccer moms there at the, at the field. And um, we were just chatting and it turns out he's a big fisherman. And, and so, you know, I, I told him what, what we do. And, and he's like, he's like, so you guys like use a lot of lures, huh? He's like, I've seen, I've seen salt truck. I've seen your stuff before. And I was like, yeah, I was like, it, it, it it's kind of liberating. It's given us a lot of freedom and control. And he's like, man, I just, I wish I could do that. He's like, I've been a live bait guy and I'm guessing he was 65 ish, maybe 70. And he's like, you know, he's got grandkids there that he was watching. He's like, I, I, I just, I feel like I've been doing live bait my entire life. And I don't, I just don't think I could do it at my age. And I was like, yeah, yeah, you can. And so we had a long discussion, but he was like us. Remember Luke, we just kind of gave up, you know, if basically if we couldn't throw a cast net, which is his thing, he's like, if I can't go out and get, you know, get live bait, get white bait there. And, uh, in Tampa area where he lives, he's like, I just, I just don't fish. I just kind of hang, hang up the cleats, hang up the wading boots, if you will, for the, uh, for the winter time. And, uh, and it hit me. I was like, man, that's so many of us. And, and that was us. It's a lot of people and, and we missed out on some of the best bites. So I just want to put that out there first. And, and we're not trying to poo poo live bait. Justin just had an epic uh, trip just a week ago with, with live bait. We use cut bait. Um, everybody uses shrimp. Um, but there are times when it does make more sense to use lures and winter can be one of those. So who wants to kick this bad boy off with either a story or a specific type of species or lure or live bait? I'll, I'll start at the, at just the macro level. Uh, just for my, my personal opinion is that for the winter time, for the typical weekend warrior who's going out maybe uh, once or twice a month, is that for the winter time, lures actually give you an advantage. And the reason why is because the fish are gonna be in pockets. They usually congregate together. So it's not like the summertime where they're spread out and, and pretty much you can go to any good looking spot and there's gonna be some fish there. In the winter time, you could pick you know six, seven spots based on trends and maybe two of them are gonna be good, but they're gonna be really good. So there's gonna be a lot of fish together. And when you're using lures, the benefit of lures is you can cover water more efficiently and quicker. And so if you can cover more water faster, odds of you coming across those good pockets of fish is going to skyrocket. Whereas with live bait, you might go to a good looking spot and you have to, to actually effectively fish. You have to, you have to spend a lot of time. And if you don't just get lucky with picking that good spot right away, you're going to fail. And that's why Joe, Joe mentioned it. Like we used to never even fish in the wintertime because we tried it. We would get live bait. We would spend longer time catching bait, which is tougher to get in the wintertime. And then we would go to these spots that we used to fish, right? Typically, we go to our summertime spots, not like not reassessing our, our plan and thinking about where the fish are going to be. And we failed to the point where we thought the fish didn't feed. Like, remember, we used the term lockjaw. Oh, it's yeah, too well, cold. They're they hibernating like bears. Yeah. <laughs> well, they came in, have, they have lockjaw. And that, that was, that, that's so far from the truth. And, and eventually, once we started doing lures, now wintertime fishing is my favorite because when you do get those pockets of fish, it could be the most amazing, amazing fishing of the year. So just want to put that macro view out there where if you're in that boat where, where it's all about live bait and, and you don't like wintertime fishing, like just, just try it. Just leave live bait alone. Don't even mess with it. Take some small jigs, some small little, little shrimp style jigs or little paddle tails, bounce it on the bottom and, and you can have some amazing fishing. And that was my feedback to that gentleman. I, I gave him a, a link, you know, to our store. And I said, get power prawn and get slam shady and get a couple different jig heads and make sure you're going slow, just like bass fishermen in the winter. I mean, you, you slow things down, got to make sure you're on the bottom. But I was like, if you can find that school of redfish, trout, snook, whatever it is, you ain't just going to find one or two. You're going to find a bunch of them. And so stealth and, uh, and, and keep it so simple with the lures, right, Justin? Oh, oh it reminds me of a song. From back in the day. And my hair is not long enough to do this. 
Boom. Simplicity. Specialist. <laughs> Love it. Never, never gets never, old. Simplicity. Never specialist is the name of the game. <laughs> and, and, and Justin, you know, with you, we, we talked about this offline. It, it, we talked about the, these little crabs that have become, I mean, there's a couple companies now who have made massive amounts of, of headway and um, and really have proven that it can work on these little crabs. And, you know, we see in both our Facebook group and in our private insider community, there's a lot of people say, man, I, I want to catch sheep shed this winter. Where, where can I go buy fiddler crabs? And all these bait stores are out. Like it's really, really tough right now for whatever reason this winter to even find them. Uh, in a baits in a tackle store and so now we've got these cool little artificial lures that are crushing it you got what's which one's that right there for those of you listening so holding that up. is the new savage gear duratech crab they have this thing is i mean to the point where look at the design on the belly it looks like an egg sack like and that's actually the weight that's mounted inside of this lure this uh, the hook is built up inside the jig head of the lure and you know we've spent a lot of time here recently playing with these things underwater. Tony went out and on his first day, testing them out for like a quick 30 minute trip, he caught two sheephead from land. Like on, on the, this is the smallest crab that Savage Gear makes. They make a three quarter inch size, tiny, tiny soft plastic crab. And I think it's actually the smallest artificial crab on the market, which is awesome for sheephead because they are really tiny mouths and you're not gonna have to worry about them stealing a bait off the hook, especially when that's pre-mounted. It's a tiny little morsel for them and your hookup ratio is awesome. So Tony was a big fan of it. We've been playing with Savage Gear makes some, Chase Baits makes a crusty crab that's been around for a while that's good. There's a couple other companies like Weston Cocoa Crab and the Cranka Crab. And we're trying all of them out to see which ones really are like the king of the crabs, which one's really the king crab. And, uh, and I think the Savage Gear we've been really impressed by here lately um, sinks a little bit faster through the water than the crusty crab, which is great, I think, in shallow water scenarios because those arms slow it down on the descent. But if you're fishing, like you said, Joe, you're finding some deeper pockets, some bridges, some holes, some docks. This gets down in the water much faster and you can make contact vertically a little bit, little bit better with, uh, with this style. So I, I really like these guys. Pretty cool. What, what is that? A what? lure for ants? It's got to be at least <laughs> three times bigger. <laughs> I agree. Hold it up to the camera. So I have a vision. Me. So do I. Let me show you mine. Dare elite. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um, he, here's what I'm hearing about, like, this crab and lures. If you haven't put it together, it's the time saving, right? Luke, Luke touched on it. You know, in the summertime... It can be easy to find bait. If you can throw a cast net or even sabiki in the right area, you can load up a live well really fast. In the winter, sometimes it's impossible, depending on the front and which way the wind's going. I mean, sometimes you could literally find zero bait or it could take you all day even just to go find some pinfish. And so this is all about saving time, right? And, and that's what I told him. I was like, man, it, it's kind of nice where you can go out from shore like Tony did. I mean, literally on his lunch break to catch fish when you have some confidence on using artificial lures. I remember when I had Mike Anderson on Real uh, Real Animals, uh, that's his TV show, if you don't know Captain Mike. And at the very end, I said like, man, what's your, what's your number one tip? Like, what's the one thing you could share with every inshore angler in, in, in Florida? Because that's really his, his niche. And he, he thought about it for a second and he says, I would tell them to learn how to use artificial lures. He's like, I, I li use live bait all the time with my customers, but he's like, it literally changes everything if you know how to do both, if you can go back and forth. And that's what you did, Jess. I mean, to talk about like last week, what did you guys use? So we, we're not trying to poo-poo live bait. What, what, what did you guys have success with on the live bait side of things here in the dead of winter? Yeah. So I actually have an insider report that's going out today. Which, oh, you, you know, mean only insiders can see it? Ah, oh, only insiders can see any. all Sorry, not the insiders. Juicy, and juicy details. And FOMO. I, I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm kind of a bit of a, a big fish fanatic. Like when I have chances to go out, all I ever, like, all I ever want to do is catch the biggest of any species. Can I catch a sheephead? Cool. I want like a Wyatt sized six pound, like on camera sheephead. 36 inch sheephead. 36 inch sheephead. <laughs> if I go for black drum, I want a 20 plus pounder. If I go for reds, I want a 35, 40 incher. And 
you know, I'll be happy to take whatever is available to me, but those big fish are available in the areas that I fish over in the Indian River. And this is the best time of the year to be able to go for them. So as the water temperatures drop, you know, the report is about bridges and how to dissect different types of bridges, because some have fenders, some have large columns with little finger supports. Um, some are pretty shallow, only eight to 10 feet, and some are 25, 35 feet deep. And these fish behave differently at different types of bridges. So, you know, I preach a lot of different things, having a variety of live bait there. We did mount some power prawns around. We got some little trout on power prawns as well, but there's times you know, in, in this report, I went out with, with live bait. We actually ended up getting like a 25 pound black drum on live shrimp on a jig head and probably one of the biggest redfish I've ever seen or been around in my entire life, like 44, 45 inches on shrimp on a jig head. Um, now there are times that I think we can target these fish with artificial lures, uh, both in the winter time and other times of the year, and the biggest thing is being able to mark congregations of fish. It was a bit of a grind in the fish finder. We weren't able to mark a lot of fish and you're looking for all the details that I'm not going to review here because they are full uh, inside to members, but there are things that can separate going out and just soaking bait on bottom at a bridge and hoping something bites and very methodically tackling each type of bridge with either artificial lures or with bait to maximize your success. And I've learned that from a lot of trial and error and a lot of error, <laughs> but, you know, now I can go out and, and have a couple different options and probably bank on some success at one of these different types of bridges, looking for different types of structure, having different types of baits and presentations available, you know, just having a lot of, you know, a lot of options in my back pocket really works, to, you know, to my favor. Um, but bridges, you know, you guys have mentioned in the wintertime, bridges are probably my go-to thing. Uh, artificial lures and the best time to apply them, Luke, I think the reason why we would favor using artificial lures in the wintertime is because, yes, that 90-10 rule is definitely more applicable now this time of the year than other times of the year because you'll go to five spots and maybe one has a pile of fish in them and you can methodically dissect that area with artificial lures. You can present the offering better sometimes with artificial than you can punking a piece of live bait out. And even a lot of times if guys go up shallow, like later on in the morning when that sun gets high and it starts cooking up the bottom, like a dark muddy bottom area and redfish and black drum and even big trout move up super shallow, you don't want to plop a live shrimp out there because that's, that's a pretty loud lure. You want something that you can use an artificial shrimp that's a little more streamlined. It's not going to land sideways. It's going to land nose down. You can use a slam shady or a gold digger pop the tail off and you have probably one of the quietest landing artificial lures out there. So you can target these fish that are sunning themselves up really, really shallow later on in the day. And, you know, I, I mean, I, later on in that video, I tried to sight fish a school of black drum that were tailing. And because we had caught those fish earlier on live bait, we threw the live shrimp on a jig head out. We threw the half crab on a jig head out and we kept spooking them because the, the sound of that live bait hitting the water would spook the school off and they didn't want to eat. I bet if I had slowed down hindsight 2020 and taken a power prawn, coated it in Dr. Juice and just let it quietly pitch out in front of them and sit on bottom, I, I probably could have gotten one of those big black drum because I did get a black drum on artificial like a week or two prior. So I know that it's possible. I just was so focused on that live bait thing and realize that being having a quiet approach probably would have you know worked that day yeah for sight fishing especially the the artificials have an advantage because you can just cast further right you can use a small lure and really let it have it whereas with live bait like you're free lining a shrimp just to, to have it have not a, a big splash ideally the smaller shrimp you use the better but you just can't cast one like you have to be a lot more gentle with with a natural bait otherwise it's just going to fly off the hook um, so, so yeah, for, I think for sight fishing lures is, is a huge advantage. Uh, but even just on the covering ground, right? Like, uh, like Joe, we did a podcast video, I guess that was a couple years ago with, uh, we we're out there with, uh, with Will, Cap Will Mason, um, doing a, a tip on just how to find fish in the winter time on a boat without a trolling motor. Yep. It was a freedom boat club boat, no frills fishing wise, right? It was just a normal, it was like a 22 foot center console. No trolling motor, no nothing fancy, and we ended up getting like 
50 to 70 trout. Like it was insane. We, but it took a while. We actually trolled for a while. We found the pocket of fish, right? We found the, the 90 tins. zone. in this case, it was like a 595 zone and the fish were just hunkering down in this one pothole. And we just caught fish after fish, after fish, throwing what Justin mentioned, a little small nub lure. It was a slam shady 2.0 uh, with the tail cut off. I literally had 10 casts in a row where I caught a trout. I literally just back to back to back. And, and it, it was, that was made possible by the fact that we covered a lot of ground beforehand. So we covered a lot of ground, kind of moved relatively fast, then found the fish, then we slowed down. But even either way, fast or slow, lures can work. Whereas with live bait, it has to be slow. You can't really, you can't troll live bait really. We never would have found that, that spot. Yeah. We, we would have that we would have spent our whole day fishing those those earlier spots that we just breezed over because there was no fish there yeah. and then um so lures I, I just can't um can't specify enough how just how important um uh, at least giving them a shot is and i personally recommend to give them the only shot where you literally force yourself my the only the when i finally got the the saw the light and i started having success is when i forced myself like five trips in a row to not even bring the cast net, not even bring any hooks. Like even if I somehow snagged a pinfish, I wouldn't let myself use it. And I would just use lures and just keep casting. And that helps in multiple, you can cover more ground. You get a lot better in your casting ability, which we, we ask guides to what's like the number one thing you, you would say to, to your anglers, as far as what they can do to help themselves catch more fish and casting is always the first, oh, yeah. the first thing, because most people are live bait only where maybe you're making 50 casts a day. Right. If you're using lures, you're making like 100 to 200 and, and just the repetition is going to make sure you get better and better. So there's just a lot of benefits uh, of just of just trying lures and just making yourself have no other option. Yep. And to be very clear, we were live bait guys. You know, that's what we grew up doing. I remember, Luke, I went to Georgia Tech. You know, I, I, I'm a couple years older than Luke. I go off to Atlanta, live there and, and I would start coming back and we would do our little annual fishing trip. And that was when Luke was really getting into lures. And I thought he was just back crazy. I was like, what are you talking about? Dude, we got this live bait. Like, why are we going to use these lures? And and I get it now. And so I, I just shared that with you that we, we've we been on, on both sides and we still use some live bait. I mean, it's tough, especially with my kids and stuff. It's tough to argue with shrimp. Uh, but uh, here's, a, here's another reason, especially in the wintertime. What's one of our favorite places to fish, the fa- uh, type of structure in the winter? I'll give you a hint. It rhymes with socks, <laughs> docks. Docks are great in the winter time. We've had so many amazing videos, experiences, fishing docks, and it can be tough to sit there and pitch live bait underneath, you know, some of these docks. It's a whole lot easier to, and, and to find the right dock that has the 9010 zone to sit there and use your troll motor and just start whipping and, and slinging slam shadies and power prawns underneath the docks and popping them off the bottom. Uh, I couldn't imagine doing that with, with live bait. It, it's just so much tougher. I mean, they don't skip very well. Uh, and you know, and you, I, I, I don't know that we could even like fish some of those docks with live bait, especially when the, the current's ripping, it's just so much more tough to, to control that presentation. Whereas a lure, you get the right jig head, you get the right weight where it's in the bottom, you pop that sucker off a couple of times and you'll know pretty quickly if there's some fish down there. Yeah, and it, it kind of goes the same way as far as dock fishing. So I do a ton of that, especially here in St. Petersburg. There's most of the shorelines are developed, so docks are everywhere. And and the same premise holds true. The earlier example was for trout on the flats, where we found that hole with a bunch of trout. The same thing holds true with docks, where there's a, a line of say 50 docks with lures. You can literally just fish them pretty efficiently and and, and relatively fast. And and again, get like a power prawn jig is my favorite power prawn on jig head, bouncing around the bottom right next to the pilings is amazing but what that does is that enables you to to figure out which docks have the most structure ideally you rig it weedless so that you can feel the structure without getting snagged some people sink stuff under the docks Um, i don't know if it's legal or not but it sure does bring fish and so when you after fishing fast you can find the docks that have the most structure those are going to be the ones with the most fish and that's when you can circle back on your next trip and use live bait where you can actually single out a specific dock take your time because live bait requires more time and then actually target the, the, the best docks. If you're going into a dock line blind, using live bait is a, is a big disadvantage. But if you do know the two or three docks out of the 50 dock span that has the most fish, that's when live bait has a big advantage where you know where the fish are, 
you can effectively position yourself so that you can use live bait, um, you know, effectively. And that's when you can really let them have it. And um, so, so the dockfish can work with live bait, it, just like anything else, you just have to go a lot slower. You have to like really select a dock and then, and then just fish it much, much slower. Yep. I also think you save money uh, with, with lures. I mean, the cost of, remember how cheap shrimp used to be like to buy a couple dozen shrimp now, geez, Louise, like fill up a tank of gas. Shrimp could be like close to five bucks a dozen now. It's just because it's hard. It's hard to come by. It's yep. like <laughs> the supply and demand issues. Mm -hmm. uh, and some of the, and if you try to buy crabs during certain times when it, there's just not much supply, holy I spent, smokes. I spent 50 bucks on crabs for that day. Like it hurts now that I think about it. And in, in prior trips, I'd go and spend 15 bucks, 20 bucks on the same amount of crabs. And I remember cashing out and I'm like, oh my gosh, why? I, I, I said, I looked at the guy, I'm like, I better catch some fish or I'm going to come back with these guys half alive and you're going to take them at half credit. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is bad, you know, but you're right, Luke. Like it is a time saver going out with lures. There's docks that I'll specifically fish in the winter time. And I'll only want to use uh, artificial lures because I'm targeting snook. And if I wanted to try to pitch a pinfish or a little pilchard or a shrimp up there, if you if you've got like 50 docks, I wouldn't be able to get through half the docks in, in the same amount of time that you would get through all of them with artificial lures. It would drive me nuts because we want to be able to maximize our efforts. Um, the really the only time I would kind of lean towards live bait, and it's it's probably fewer scenarios, is if I wanted a monster fish. That's not to say that you can't catch one on artificial, but you know, they did get big by not by being dumb. So sometimes live bait's the thing to use, but depending on where, like what types of areas you're fishing, what species you're going for, nine times out of 10, artificial can get it done and can get it done more efficiently. Um, and it, like me in the kayak in the winter, I don't want to take a live bait out. I don't want to get wet. I don't want to get cold. You know, that's the thing I'm worried about is uh, having to reach my hand back in the bucket and then my hand freezes and cramps up and I can't like get a good grip on my rod. That drives me nuts. I know, I know Tony caught some monster bull reds in the month of February, you know, using cut bait, going to some of those little inlets and deeper pockets where he knew there's a school of redfish or, or black drum, but he had some of those big reds. Remember that he's, he's in full on winter gear. And, and so that is a time when you're, tr when you know where they are, right. And, and you're, and, and you really just want to catch a monster. I I'm all for that using, you know, I think he was using cut, cut mullet, uh, or, you know, or shrimp in your case, Justin, which is what you guys use recently. Um, but I, I'm also with you in terms of just getting tight lines, which is the goal for most of us, right? If we have the day off or the weekend off or the hall pass or whatever it is, we we don't want to get skunked, right? I, I, I'd personally rather, you know, catch 10 fish that are all just good than, you know, than, than risk getting skunked in hopes that I might catch one big one. I don't know. And, and for me too, it's almost like once you catch, let's just say 10 or, or 50 uh, average size fish, it takes the pressure off. Then you can get, go get more aggressive and, uh, and try to go after the, uh, you know, your, your PB, if you will, personal best for the lay person. Um, so I don't know. I just, I, I, it seems weird cause I never would have said this, you know, when I was 20 years old, but, uh, I, I, I love artificial lures. Um, I mean, it, it really, I mean, as Mark said, it gives you Mike, Mike Anderson so much more control, so much more freedom, and you become a better angler, uh, as Luke said. I mean, you, you you get more you get more chances to cast. You become a better caster, which is such a big part of it. And everything improves when you start using lures. Uh, I like I like that expression where you're like, uh, I have more freedom. Like using artificial lures, it set me free, man. It did. I'm not I'm not mm. confined by the shackles of bait now. <laughs> but this is, this is more rewarding too right yeah. i mean like yeah. especially if you're doing catch and release fishing which a lot of people are which is fantastic it, it's just you know you're you're fooling a fish to eat something that is plastic right that's not natural whereas you know with live bait a lot of times that that makes like the angler made that happen and whereas live bait obviously that like the actual bait is doing most of the dirty work because um, if especially if you position properly, a lot of times you just let the let the bait just drift naturally back with the current. That's actually the, the best way to catch the big fish, as Justin was saying. Yep. Um, and it also depends on the species you're targeting to. I just wanted to add that in. Like 
like redfish, sea trout, snook, and flounder are very, are, they're aggressive fish. Like, like it's, it's almost like a bass. Like it's, it, to me, I just never understood now that I've, I've finally made the transition to, to lures, never understood why bass anglers, I would say a majority of bass anglers are using lures throughout the entire year to target largemouth bass. And then people targeting redfish, snook, flounder, and trout are almost always using live bait. And, and I would actually say that the saltwater fish are as aggressive, if not more aggressive than largemouth. And, and so for that reason, when I'm going after those species, I, I now rarely use live bait. I'm, it's pretty much all lures. But if I'm going after sheep's head or mangrove snapper, they, they're not quite as, I guess, I, let me just say sheep's head, mangrove snapper are pretty aggressive. But for sheep's head in particular, I love, I love catching sheep's head and that's, you know, uh, everything else has been closed to eat. And I like having some, some nice fish fillets and the sheep's head are delicious. Um, that's when, if I really want to get after them and I think it's somebody new, I don't use the lures. I, I, I love, I like doing it personally because it's, it's more fun and it can usually catch two or three uh, per hour, which is plenty. Uh, but if I'm taking somebody new that isn't the best caster, then, then live shrimp is hard to beat uh, because sheep's head aren't as aggressive. Like they're not going to chase down a lure from a long distance, like a redfish or a snookwood or especially trout. You know, you basically have to get it right in their face and have it drop perfectly down. If you're fishing dock pineups that you normally do, have that crab lure that Justin showed earlier, like drift sink perfectly down the, down the pylon. If you're a foot off of it, you're not going to catch anything. Um, whereas with, with, with a natural bait, you can soak it down there and they'll eventually smell it and find their way to it. Yeah, that little crab there is awesome. Um, so, so for sheep's head, live shrimp is really hard to beat. But if you're going after snook, redfish, trout, flounder, like lures really are effective because uh, those fish are aggressive. It's not like you have to put it right on their nose and the, or else they won't eat it. They'll actually chase it down unless it's super cold. But, but either way, like lures just flat out work. You know, one thing we didn't point out is that lures help eliminate the chance for bycatch. You know, if you're going to use bait on bottom, you're going to, you're eventually going to have to deal with stuff you don't want to catch. Catfish, stingray, puffer fish, pinfish pecking apart your shrimp. Sometimes you'll put a shrimp out there and you'll go through 10 or 15 shrimp and either get pecked off or, or get some sort of pesky fish you don't want to deal with to get that one quality fish. And if you use artificial and you dedicate to it, not only will you save time, and fish more effectively, but you're going to increase your chances of catching the fish you really want. I mean, when I'm like offshore, believe it or not, if guys go offshore, just for example, regardless whether it's winter or other times of the year, they take bait because they want to fill their cooler. I would rather go offshore and use only artificials. I'm that weird guy. Yes, it's very gratifying, Luke, but you know, there's times that, yeah, I don't want to deal with bycatch. I don't want to drop down 200 feet and then have my bait be picked off and not know it. And I'm sitting there fishing on credit for five, 10 minutes, not fishing effectively. So lures definitely, are, you know, they, they have more pros. I think they out, it, there are more benefits to using artificial lures than live bait here. Yeah, and even got, I'll go for it, Luke. I was going to say even the power prawns, like I, I never would have considered using lures on like near shore reefs until we fish with one of our insider club members, Marcos, uh, down in the Everglades. He's the one that, that really kind of got us, got us trained on, on the shrimp lures and, and, and just how effective they are. And there's this reef off of Boca Grande that we've, Joe, like we've, we used to get on there all the time and we've fished this reef many times. It's in about 30 feet of water. We've just always historically taken squid or live shrimp and soaked on the bottom. We've caught like a good amount of fish, but nothing really big. Like we caught a lot of sheep's head, a lot of snapper. And after testing out these power prawns, now we've caught multiple snooks, some of which over 40 inches and no small stuff. As Justin said, it weeds out all the little small stuff. And now we're catching some big snook. Like that's something that I never, I didn't realize snook, you know, years ago, I didn't realize snook were even out in those reefs. And, and never did we catch them with live baits, shockingly, because we were using those little smaller baits. And as soon as they get down, they're immediately pounced on. And it's usually whatever finds it first. Typically, it's going to be a pinfish or a little snapper um, or all those little grunts, all the stuff that's on those reefs. But when you use those, those shrimp lures, especially the bigger ones, like the, for that, I use the, the bigger shrimp just to weed out the small stuff. And then you'll just be working it with the big jig head. You can feel it thump the bottom. All of a sudden, you'll feel that big old thump. And it's game on and it, it, it really is rewarding. And, and it's just, a, it was just the biggest surprise that I had that, that going out there on the reefs can actually catch big snook without live bait totally blew me away. Yeah. Yeah. And so to, to add to that, man, 
people think if you go for big snook with you're getting a big snook on artificial that kind of goes against like you you're right it's species dependent there's sometimes i'll want to use like for big black drum it can be hard to get them on on artificial but you can it's very doable but one thing that's really cool about going and doing what, what luke's talking about is you could be pretty quick on the trigger with an artificial so you can get these big snook on the right geared, I mean, you could take some flats in short tackle out there, use the same power prawns on jig heads and get a monster snook because you're quick on the trigger to get that fish away from structure. If you had bait down on bottom and you have to wait for the bite, chances are they're going to get it and they're already going to be in structure and you're not going to get them out of there. So the fact that you're constantly working and, and you have contact with that presentation, when you get the bite, you can be quick at the draw. So and just another benefit. I'm thinking of all the things. It's like, why did I, why did I not use well, artificial rivers all day? Here's the big one, Justin. I didn't, I didn't think we we're going to have to go here, but I'm going to do it. And the oh. question comes down to this. Are you a fisherman or are you just a reeler? And here's what I mean. We have a, a friend who's a guide and he told us that never under any circumstance does he let his clients, he's taking people out every day, actually set the hook, like hold the rod in their hand to set the hook on a fish guess who does it rodney is rodney the rod holder so all rods are in the rod holder everyone has to sit back and drink beer and literally all they do when captain says fish on is pick up the rod from the rod holder and just crank down and reel now that can be fun i've done that before on a charter and you know drink some beer and that is fun but if that's all you've ever done i kind of debate if that's like a fisherman like legit fishing just throwing it out there and that's obviously live bait throwing some shrimp and some greenies out there and what do you guys think fisherman or reeler uh and so i i was serious i was like so like no one even experienced people was like nope rodney does all the work rodney sets every hook little circle hook out there and rodney does all the work we pick it up and and let him reel it in listen i don't i don't break rods but if i do it's going to be on a hook set to where it's a number seven on the on the richter scale okay <laughs> that's that's how i feel watch my videos if i set the hook i set the hook dude so um you know i don't know it's just me not with circle hooks obviously but yeah if i got a j hook out there with bait or if i'm using artificial like i'm letting the fish know that i'm there <laughs> but to me that's that's such a big that's a fun part of it right yeah, i mean lucas yeah. kids i mean even with kids with an old school cane pull on the end of a dock they're in lake otis and lake link where we grew up I mean, just feeling that that initial tap. And then we got into bass fishing. I mean, with old school culprit and Berkeley worms, I mean, feeling that tap and setting that was part that's part of the I mean, that's some of the most exciting part about fishing. Yeah. Uh, not just someone handing you a rod with a fish on it. So I, I want to I know it's kind of a, a low, a low punch, but it, it is it is true. And there's not I, by the way, for guides listening, there's nothing wrong with that. That's how you make a living hundred percent. And there's plenty of people, that's what they need right? Because you can, it, it is a skill to be able to know when to set that hook or when to reel down. If you have a circle hook, uh, it, it, it this is not poking fun at anything. Uh, but I, I did want to bring that up because I, I, I do see that a whole lot more with the live bait people, if you will, that's all they know how to do. And there's many of uh, live bait guys and gals who say, Oh, I had an epic day. And all they did was just reel in. Um, for me, I, I don't think it's as satisfying. That's that's just me from being on on both sides, and we've done that. I mean, so we we've had days where, and it was still fun. Still took some great fish picks, but man, there's something cool as you said, Luke, about fooling a fish to hit a piece of plastic or a piece of wood or whatever it is, and 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 to get them, you know, from start to finish all the way into the boat. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah. Yep. And I would say just a lot of it is, is just experience level. And, and to me, my biggest growth, and as Joe mentioned, it was, it was kind of when I was in college and starting to, to explore new areas, whereas before I would always go back to the same. You finally got armpit hair. You really grew. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we'd always go back to the same late, spots. Like late either, bloomer. either Tampa or, uh, or Charlotte Harbor. And, and, and we'd always just go back to the same spots over and over again, and we'd always take live bait. And there really wasn't any growth in my ability to, to read water and, and, and assess if an area is good or not. And, and that was just because I wasn't covering much, much ground. And it, literally, when I started forcing myself 
to only use lures. And I would only use one lure for that matter. I would use a, the, the uh, in that case, the Zoom Super Fluke. And that, cause I use that for bass fishing and I caught a couple snook with it. So I would literally just use the Zoom Super Fluke and I, I moved over to Melbourne. And so I, I was in new territory. I've never fished before. And the biggest growth I ever had as an angler in a short amount of time was when I just had that Zoom Super Fluke and I had the troll motor up front and I would just go down the shoreline and I could actually see fish. I could cast to it and I could watch how they react. And then I could see where I could see fish and see where they're holding and where they weren't holding. And over time, I was able to quickly, when I go to a spot, I now could say, okay, I was in a spot like this under the same conditions. And I saw 12 fish right over there, like in this type of little, little pocket of it. And then I could quickly just find those pockets like faster and faster and faster. It's almost like a puzzle, like every day is a puzzle and you have to put it together. And the more experience you have putting the pieces together, the, the better you are going to be doing it, obviously. And if you're using live bait and you keep going back to the same spot over and over again, you're really not learning um, how to read water nearly as quickly. Yes, you are learning, not, not learning anything at all, but it's just not, it's not as quick. And so I, I just wish that we're kind of poo-pooing on, on live bait, but, but hopefully you can see our point. Like I, I personally wish, like had we switched earlier, had we made that switch five years or earlier, right? Or even more, I mean, think how much farther ahead we'd be. Like, cause that was five years. Yes, we were getting better, but it was very slow incrementally. And then just get rid of the live bait, getting rid of the, the baggage as, as I call it, because it's baggage holding you back from actually exploring new waters. When you let go of that baggage and just, just get the freedom, as Joe said, cover ground and just start just taking note of where you're seeing fish even if you're spooking them that's cool you're at least finding them um, and then you'll get eventually get better and better and and it was just the the biggest game changer that I personally had was just was just focusing on lures and, and most importantly focusing on finding the fish because that's what lures force you to do it's not about oh am I rigging this ride do I need to replace my bait it's really about hey did I just cast in a spot that is holding fish or not holding fish and uh, so finding the fish should be uh, you know pri primary focus of every trip which, and is lures what we do, which is what we do at the insider club every day yep. yeah i was gonna say if there's go ever it, there's ever a time to use artificial lures if you're going to make the change to go from being a live bait person to artificial now's the time think about it 10 to 15 years ago while those lures that were available to us would still catch fish because it's all about presentation and how you work the lure your options now and the way that they've been refined and tweaked um, I mean, yes, realistic design can help, but presentation is key. And the way that we like the power prawn, for example, dude, can you imagine if you had the power prawn 10 years ago? Like we didn't have anything like that. Now the stuff we used back then still would have caught fish. The zoom super fluke worked then still works now, but there's lures today that have been tweaked to the point where it makes it easier for somebody to transition from live bait over to artificial lures. So I'd say if you, if you haven't done it, you have a lot of options now and we refine all of that to go back to Joe in our insider club. Yes. And, and to be yeah. clear, you don't have to switch from being live bait to lures. It's not like Seinfeld where, you know, he was thinking about doing something different. He's like, I got to get all new clothes and new friends. No, it, it, <laughs> it is Peter Deke says, you know, who's got many world records. He's like the, the, the way to become a complete angler is to be able to fish with everything including fly fishing right for him he's like i want to be able to be great at everything from fly fishing to conventional to uh, obviously live bait lures whatever it is he's like that's a complete angler who can go up there and 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 adjust and 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 figure out what the trends are and read the water and know exactly what they need to need to use and and that is you know one of our big initiatives with the insider club and why we focus on on fishing brand new spots Every single day, literally Monday through Friday, we go fish a new spot and film the whole thing and, and put it up there. So if you're not an insider member yet, doggone, you uh, you are missing out. Uh, it is amazing on helping you find the fish, saving money on tackle as well, which we'll talk about in just a second. And then the community part of it, meeting friends and finding people in your area and, and just getting help. Uh, you know, from other people who have been in your shoes, regardless if you're just starting out and you've never caught a saltwater fish, or if your goal is to catch, you know, uh, your first slam, or if 
you're pretty good and have been fishing for 30, 40 years. And even full-time guides have joined uh, this club because they see the value. So I'd love to ask you two, there's probably a lot of people here listening that, that are primarily live baiters and maybe even consider themselves reelers. Nothing wrong with that. We, we welcome you with open arms and warm hugs. But if they're confused on where to start, I, I would suggest that, as Justin said earlier, keep it simple right? Simplicity is absolutely key. If you guys could just say three lures, like three wintertime lures to start and, and maybe some correlating jig heads, uh, what do you do? We get to leave top water out. That's, this is not the time where you go to Bass Pro and just spend $500 on every lure possible. Keep it simple. As Luke said, go out with one or two lures and just own it. Like keep using those until you dial it in. So what do you guys think? Luke, Luke and I are in first agreement on the first lure. One, two, three. Power prawn. Oh, 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 paper scissors. Oh, yeah, I, I think I think for all water clarities, the the this just a paddle tail, right? Like just paddle tails flat out work, and and they take less um they take less skill, I should say, to use. So I think I think for somebody starting out, the paddle tail is hard to be. I think they should graduate to the power prawn, but the power prawn does require the angler to give it some some more refined twitches, if you will. Whereas a paddle tail works great with the twitches, but also you can just do a flat reel. Like, like we, uh, we had a meetup, I guess a couple of years ago and Joe brought his daughter, Sean at the time was like six or seven. And, and she caught some, some trout by herself and we threw a paddle tail. We actually had a cast for her a little bit because just to help her get a long cast, but she was just reeling and looking around, like not even paying attention. And all of a sudden her rods bend over and she's got, she's catching fish. So I think that a small little paddle tail, like the same tube 2.0 would be, would be a definite. And then I would say for me, number two would be what Justin just said. Sorry, Justin. <laughs> no, no, I'm surprised. That's a fair point. Yeah. If we could just three lures to get started and do it and cover all the bases, I would say yes, paddle tail on the slam shady. Also add the contrast, which would be the gold digger, because there's going to be times that you just want to use different, different contrast based on water clarity, you know, whether the water's murky or tannic or whatnot. So slam shading gold digger, paddle tail for sure. Power prawn. Power prawn is like, I always have one tied on. So whether you're getting started into it or you've been doing it for a long time, this is hands down the most universal lure, I think. Um, I would fair to argue, I think Luke and I have a difference of view on it. I would probably use this, especially right now, over like a jerk shad, you know, over a jerk shad. I think um, the jerk shad does kind of appeal. It, it can have a shrimp presentation, but especially right now when the water's cold and a lot of fish are targeting on crustaceans, whether you rig it on a jig head or you take it weedless and you're fishing around little patches of mossy grass or seagrass or even around oysters and you don't want to snag or docks. If you don't want to snag, you want to skip up underneath and work tight to the docks. This can be great. I think the power prawn offers you uh, a lot of different ways you can present that lure. But you're right, it does. So it's a little more advanced. We're going from like yellow belt to brown belt kind of thing. And, and what jig heads, um, we're going to send everyone to fishstrong.com to get this power prawn and slam shitty 2.0. What are we thinking? A, a quarter for uh, for winter is kind of a must to get a little bit deeper. And what else? Yeah. We, uh, weedless for when they are fishing shallows in the middle of the day. So it is all about depth coverage. And yeah, that's, that's so true. I think that if you're going to be fishing in excess of four or five feet, yes, a quarter ounce probably covers everything for the most part. A um, little bit of current, no current. If you're in excess of four or five feet, a quarter ounce jig head would be the way to go. Um, we have been testing. These are going to be soon available, depending on when you're listening to this podcast. These, uh, these mag shroom jig heads actually pair really, really well with the power prawn. Uh, but we've also had success with Z-Man trout eye or redfish eye. The redfish eye works better on the regular power prawn, that original size power prawn. And the junior size is better with like a Z-Man trout eye. It's a shorter jig head. Um, and as for weedless, um, for the most part, if you're going weedless, you're, you're fishing shallower water. While, while you can fish docks, you know, I sometimes will still fish docks weedless so that I don't snag. Weedless presentations like this, um, there, we, you know, an owner twist lock, what do you think, Luke? Like a four odd eighth ounce would be bigger for the power prawns, but for the slam shady, like the smaller paddle tails, hundred percent. It'd be like a three odd eighth ounce is probably the go-to all around. Um, can work wintertime, summertime, springtime, doesn't matter. Three odd eighth ounce is probably the best overall size for paddle tails. 
Yeah, and, and the depth control is so crucial. And, and so we, we have a guide for, for matching the right jig heads or weighted hooks for the, for the right lures. And so we'll make sure to put a link down below. And it's crucial because if the fish are down on the bottom in five feet of water and you're fishing a three foot depth lure, especially after cold front, those fish aren't going aren't gonna to go up and, and, but, and get it. And, but if you get down an extra two feet, you're going you're gonna to have a heyday. So it's, it's a big deal is depth control. And choosing the right one, whether it needs to be weedless or not weedless, there's a lot of options. It can get confusing. So for that reason, we put together a chart that you can kind of match. Hey, I'm gonna, I need this type of lure in this depth range, and it needs to be weedless. It'll give you the right one and the right, the right size hook, the right size weight. So very important. So I'd say like literally um, those two lures, so the, the power, like the, the small paddle tail and the power prawn, that's literally those two lures alone have been responsible for, I would say 95% of my catches lately. So like I'm having a tough time getting a third lure to be honest. Um, yeah, I, mean, I mean, it could sure be the, all... I, I was, I was leaving that open for the crab just cause we talked about it if, if for winter and you really wanted to catch sheep. So, but even that's oh, yeah. a little bit more sophisticated than just, you know, going out with a paddle tail or a shrimp. I'll, I'll, I will add one one more because in some areas um puffer fish can be really uh, a huge pain where no matter how tough the soft plastic is you're using the puffer fish will bite right through it and so when i'm in puffer territory if i'm getting a lot of a lot of lures come back with big with chunk marks out of it or the whole tail bitten off it's almost always a puffer uh, that's when i'll go to, to like a weedless spoon so i would say this is something i don't use it quite as much because i haven't really been having any puffer issues but I still always have at least a few weedless spoons at my disposal so that I can, I can still fish areas with puffer fish without just getting my, my gear wrecked. So that would be like, that's the lure that I use, but I really have hardly been using it all lately. So, uh, but yeah, the crab, if, if sheep's had the equation, crab, those crab lures are, are awesome. Cool. And you can find all that at fishstrong.com, which is our online tackle store. And of course is inside our members, you get 20, even 30% off. Uh, everything in the store and if you're not a member yet what are you waiting for we actually have a 365 day 100 money back guarantee we basically built this because it was something that we wish was around when we were trying to catch more fish and, and we still learn from it every single day i'm in that community luke's in the community justin's the community all of our fishing coaches are in this private community every day learning from each other sharing what's working fishing new spots and, and we share everything we don't hold anything back and uh and, and as i said it's everything we wish was uh was around and and we also want to treat people like we wish other companies treated us and that's why we have this unheard of 365 day guarantee so we say either you're going to find and catch more fish and save money on tackle and you meet new friends and if those things don't happen and if you're not 100 satisfied for any reason get all your money back so we, we've literally taken all the risk off of you and put it on us to uh, perform all we ask in return is that you actually get in there and and go through some of these courses we throw in some free mastery courses if you just go through those three courses alone you will know more than like 95 98 percent of of all inshore fishermen out there uh, just those three courses and then obviously start implementing it and uh and then and then downsizing we the, the goal is not to have you buy a ton of new tackle it's to help you save money and, and yeah, we do sell a lot of our tackle store, but it's very like, I mean, it's super, super specialist, right? We're not going to be a Bass Pro with 500 SKUs because you don't need half that stuff is not good. And, and that's what makes us so unique. We don't have any sponsors. We literally just say, guys, here's exactly what you need. Here what's, here's what's working based on like us using it. Not, not just, we're not like a typical manufacturer that just says, hey, yeah, here's our new thing. Hope it, hope it works. Go out and use it. We don't put anything out there until we use it. And if we can't beat it ourselves, then we buy it from, from someone else and put it in our store. So it makes us very, very unique. And uh, what makes us unique is that, you know, 20 to 30% off savings, which is, uh, which is massive uh, on, on top of the fact we're saving you from buying stuff you don't need. So that's all there at saltstrong.com. That's where you go join the club, the insider club, saltstrong.com. Over 27,000 members as we're recording this. And, uh, and it's growing by the day. It's been really, really cool to see all these new faces in the community. Uh, wild 
how, uh, how fast it's been growing. So we appreciate you guys. I know a lot of you uh, members listen to this as well. So thank you guys so much. Make sure to get in the community, some really neat things we're doing in there, some new products coming out very soon as well. Some new tackle products that we've been uh, testing for quite some time. So really excited about that. Justin, Luke, great job. Uh, stay warm toodles and uh, keep on setting those hooks and oh, reeling man. them in. Yeah. I am. Ron Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys. Times. Peace.